Hi, welcome back to Focal Point AFR Talk. Brian Fisher is my name. The program is Focal Point. The network is AFR Talk, the most feared and dangerous radio network in all of America. And I'm honored to welcome to our decision maker line one of the men who may be as responsible as I am for making this a dangerous radio network. And that is my good friend and colleague, fellow uh, talk show host here on AFR Talk, Kevin McCullough. Kevin, welcome to Focal Point with Brian Fisher. Happy Election Day, sir. I'm, I'm assuming you got out and voted before you did your show today. I did, as a matter of fact, and I was telling my listening audience, Kevin, as <laughs> um, I had no idea until I went to vote. You know, Roger Wicker's the incumbent Republican. I didn't even know who, the name of the Democrat that was running against him because the guy's not run any sort of a campaign, haven't seen an ad. I didn't even know the name of the guy that was running against him. You know the name of the guy that's running against the incumbent Republican senator in Mississippi? It's Albert N. Gore, Jr., Al Gore Jr., but it's not. It's Isn't that not crazy. Yes, no relation to Al Gore whatsoever. Completely different Gore. <laughs> he thinks they might be distantly related, some some time back to the days of William the Bruce or something like that. Anyway, Kevin, <laughs> uh, good to have you on. Um, Thank you. And uh, you can kind of bring us a little bit of regional uh, perspective. And I wanted to start with something, Kevin. I I, I set this soundbite up in the last uh, segment and I didn't play it, so I want to start off with this. Because it has to do with this whole issue of voter fraud, and maybe we can talk about that. I know you've done some posting on your Facebook page about some of what we've seen with with poll uh, watchers in Philadelphia, places like that. So we'll kick that around a little bit. But it's interesting to me uh, to listen to Howard Dean, what he has to say here. And it seems like the Democrats are the ones that are out there taking the lead, trying to create this template that the election could be stolen from Barack Obama. Let's listen. This is uh, Howard Dean this morning. In Pennsylvania, people are standing outside the polls asking for their IDs. The federal judges enjoin them from doing that, but that's what's happening. I have a, a voter in my family who went to vote and was required to cast a provisional ballot even though they were registered to vote. So, you know, this stuff is going on. It's, it's going, we've seen this before. We've seen this movie before. There's a group of people in this country who think that their winning is more important than everybody voting, and I think that's wrong. Mm. Chuck Todd, do you have a question for the governor? Governor, I mean, that's that's a big charge. I mean, do you think do you think the president could? You do you believe if he loses Ohio, it'll be because of voting irregularities? I do, I do. I think that's given the, the only way he loses Ohio. That's correct. Given the given the vote uh, and the leading of the polls uh, in Ohio. Uh, the only way he can lose is if people are prevented from casting their ballots, either by voting machines that aren't functioning right or other forms of harassment. So, uh, Kevin, what do you make of that? It seems like, I, I, you know, oh, how, Brian, do you, how do you, react, how do you this. react to Howard Dean saying the voter fraud and intimidation is being carried out by Republicans? I'm, I'm sitting here with the biggest grin <laughs> on my face because I did not realize you were going to play that clip this morning. I, I kind of out of a, um, I don't know, half sadistic, uh, you know, uh, impulse within me, I flipped uh, here in my studios from Fox over to MSNBC, and the thought was, I just want to see what they're talking about and to see how they're positioning the day. And it was Morning Joe, and I saw that clip that you just played, but I saw it live. And then I blogged about this on my Facebook page, and I, I want to give your listeners a a little sample of, number one, why that clip was so funny, and then, number two, answer your question about uh, what it means. But the first thing, within a three-minute period, you had MSNBC return from a break. And my, my, my title on the blog is, How Bad Is This? <laughs> um, they return from break. Mika Brzezinski, who's co-hosting Morning Joe with Joe Scarborough, says, there's a live look at uh, President Obama as he just has uh, finished up his voting. She goes from there, they, they chit-chat back and forth, then they introduce Dean, they bring him on. He says what you just heard about Philadelphia and Pennsylvania, and then they cut to Chuck Todd, who says, well, based on that, do you think it's the, why they're going to win Ohio? Now, I don't know if anyone at NBC, MSNBC actually does know anything, but I know, for instance, that Mika Brzezinski did not know that President Obama voted early on October the 29th, and the footage that they were showing was him walking into a campaign office, <laughs> not him a live look at his ballot, at the, him casting his ballot. Number huh. two, Dean talking about Philadelphia and talking about how, uh, you know, this, this, this terrible, 
this terrible harassment's going on. What are they doing? What's so terrible? Oh, they've asked people to show who they are. Oh, oh, that. Oh, well, most people don't think that's harassment. And then lastly, Chuck Todd, evidently confused with what Howard Dean's talking about, asks him about Ohio and saying, well, that thing that they're doing right there, is that the how they're doing? How, how can voter harassment in Philadelphia carry over to Ohio? I don't understand. I, 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 don't, I don't follow. But I know one thing. I was dumber at the end of three minutes for having watched MSNBC, and I quickly grabbed my remote and turned it back to Fox to get back up to speed on on actually even in fair balance debate. Hey, it hey, was just, Jeff, do it we was st- insane. Do we still have that uh, we're all dumber now audio clip anywhere in the queue? <laughs> do we have that? If Jeff can find that, we'll play that here. Maybe we'll replay the Howard Dean clip and then we'll play the uh, the, the commentary on it. But, but you know, It was but, three minutes of sheer okay, well, let, let's surreal listen. craziness. Let's listen to the Howard Dean clip again, and then, Jeff, you just play the uh, the, the commentary right after it. In Pennsylvania, people are standing outside the polls asking for their IDs. The federal judges enjoin them from doing that, but that's what's happening. I have a, a voter in my family who went to vote and was required to cast a provisional ballot, even though they were registered to vote. So, you know, this stuff is going on. As we've, gone, we've seen this before. We've seen this movie before. There's a group of people in this country who think that their winning is more important than everybody voting, and I think that's wrong. Mm. Chuck Todd, do you have a question for the governor? Governor, I mean, that's that's a big charge. I mean, do you think do you think the president could? You do believe if he loses Ohio, it'll be because of voting irregularities? I do, I do. I think that's the, the only way he loses Ohio. That's correct. Given the given the vote uh, and the leading of the polls uh, in Ohio, uh, the only way he can lose is if people are prevented from casting their ballots either by voting machines that aren't functioning right or other forms of harassment. What you just said is one of the most insanely idiotic things I have ever heard. Everyone in this room is now dumber for having listened to it. And that includes you and me, uh, Kevin. I know Uh, I was. At the (laughs) end of that three minutes, I was ashamed of myself for having put MSNBC on my TV screen. Now, to your question, um, I do think that they are positioning themselves to uh, set up some sort of narrative. You know, election days are interesting. We've seen this in recent history, Brian, where... You know, the narrative will be, you know, what's the turnout like early in the morning? And in the mid-afternoon, you start getting exit polling. And people, oh, well, you know. And we know from 2000 and 2004 that the exit polling was really wrong. In 2008, it wasn't a whole lot better, uh, but it wasn't as off, it wasn't as far off as it was in 2000 and 2004. Um, and, I, and it's all about telling a story. Well, what Howard Dean's doing there is he's, he's positioning Pennsylvania to say, hey, if we got to go back for a recount, we're, we're going to say that, uh, you know, people were noticing funny business early, early on today. And, and they're starting to tell that narrative, even though it lacks substance, it lacks facts, there's nothing there that, that, uh, that indicated anybody was doing anything wrong. Even, even if a judge had enjoined uh, poll watchers from doing it, Americans should be running, skipping, and, and, and with glee to the polls. I, when, I, when I voted this morning, I know I wasn't going to have to be asked for it. I pulled it out, and I slapped it right down in front of the poll worker. I said, just wanted you to know I really am who I say I am. <laughs> I did exactly the same thing. A lot of people I know. <laughs> you know, we've got a, in the state where I live and vote, we amended our state constitution last year. We elevate. It's not just a law. It's part of our state constitution that people have to show photo ID. And Eric Holder and Obama's Department of Justice went to court to freeze frame uh, that thing, despite the Tenth Amendment that says this is none of the federal government's business. So it's all kind of kind of static uh, right now. Uh, but I was determined, and a lot of people were, to show our photo ID anyway. we got nothing to hide. We're we're proud to be able to vote. We're happy to show ID to indicate that we are exactly who we claim to be. You know, and the thing I wonder about, Kevin, you know, what Howard Dean is really doing there is he's setting the stage. If Obama loses this election, he's giving a grievance to Obama supporters to believe that something has been stolen from them. Right. And you know, cheated. And, and, yep. and yeah, that the, 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 they they won this by cheating. They won this through fraud. They took something that rightfully belonged to Barack Obama, rightfully belonged to them. You know, and I still have this concern about civil unrest if Obama loses this thing, especially well, you're not when the only one. I mean, there's been there's been major uh, mainstream news articles about uh, uh, the and you got to remember, you know, Obama's a Chicago boy. 
um, they're the they're the same city, and I was living there at the time that that burned buildings when the Bulls won the championship. So imagine what happens if a hometown hero loses something important. I mean, it is it is a little bit um, of a fearful thing to think about what some of the reaction is going to be. But I really do think, Brian, that um, I think that whoever wins tonight has a responsibility to step up and call for the nation to um, proceed peacefully like we have 44 other times uh, from one uh, person of power to the next. And, well, and, and, you know, and, you and wonder... to do so with the, with the heritage that Americans are not the people that riot when we lose an election. You know, and I wonder, Kevin, the number to call, Kevin, can you stick around for another segment and help me feel Absolutely. some phone calls? Okay, the number to call if you'd like to join in, weigh in on the on the polling on Election Day 2012, 888-589-8840, 888-589-8840. Kevin and I both will be here to kind of field your calls and interact, 888-589-8840. But, you know, Kevin, I look, I look at this, if Romney were to lose this election, he's a gentleman... He would accept uh, the loss gracefully. He would issue the kind of appeal, ex- exactly the kind of appeal you're talking about. I, I don't know what President Obama would do if he loses this election. How, how would he handle himself? What do you think? Well, you know, I wrote a book about him, and I think that uh, the, the problem with the president is that there's two people trapped inside of him. Um, there's the person that uh, is the loving father to his daughters and, you know, seems to be really in love with his wife and kind of just actually is a very private person and doesn't want to be, uh, I don't think you, <laughs> I don't think Barack Obama ever woke up going, oh, I, I hope I get to be president for eight years. I think that there's a lot about who Obama is that is really underpinned by uh, partisan activists and uh, ideologues within his party. And I think that the other half of Obama, that side, the side that's motivated by those guys, is going to come out swinging and fighting if he, uh, if he loses. We're talking here with Kevin McCullough, host of the Kevin McCullough Program, right here on the American Family Radio Talk Network. We'll take your phone calls, 888-589-8840. And I, you know, uh, I share Kevin's concern if we hear any more of this revenge business from, from the president, any hint that this thing was stolen could be trouble. Focal Point AFR Talk. 